We're back and we're under the bright lights of the internet. I'm Jeff Gerstmann. Welcome back to GiantBomb.com's coverage of E3 2017. We've got another cavalcade of stars here tonight. Starting with down on the end there, we've got Rami Ismail, Rami Vlambeer down Rami there. Rami Vlambeer, my last name is Vlambeer. Yeah. Rami Vlam. I picture, like, if you, were, if you were to just start going by Rami Vlambeer and just wear, like, a leisure suit or That's something like that. That's just Rami Vlambeer? Yeah. So like, I'm I, Rami Vlambeer. What's going on? Wait, uh, but then if I get married, is it then also Adriel Vlambeer? Is that how that works? I, I think, yeah, I mean. I don't think I, she's happy with she, that. I think she would get to choose no, at that I don't point. Think it's not going to work. It could be, like, a hyphen. <laughs> yeah. Adriel Wallach Vlambeer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. It's got a ring to yeah. That's, and then she technically owns some part of the company. I, I forget how it works. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Let's just not do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> we get uh, Brendan Green uh, from, I guess, is it Blue Note technically? Blue Hole. Blue Hole. Sorry, yeah. Blue Note. Yeah. Uh, of player unknown fame. Yes. I suppose. Made a game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And w welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And we've got uh, Dave Cracker from Spike Chunsoft. Uh, well, technically, it's uh, Cracker, but Craker, you know, I'm sorry. It's, 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 a, it's a very good icebreaker. Okay. So All right. I'll let you keep it. <laughs> Thank you, Dave Cracker, uh, uh, for coming. Three, three yeah. out of three, man. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. <That's... laughs> Pow! He's a professional. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do around here. It's just uh, just set, people set him up, I knock him down. Is that how that works? We got Alex and Dan in the back. Hello. Oh, Hi. Hello. How's Hello. it going back there? Uh, great. That's yeah. nice. The lights aren't quite as bright back here. Yeah. So, independent game development, you guys are all doing it in some form or, or another. Uh, Rami, uh, you uh, have shipped a lot of games on consoles, and what I just want to know, what do you think of the press conferences this year? Because it seems like Ooh. they've waxed and waned when it comes to showing I, independent games. I personally games. thought Sony was, well, in terms of independent games, there was none. Of, like, there's nothing to complain about because they had nothing, so it's hard to complain. Yeah, like, there's yeah. Just, just nothing to talk about. Fair enough. I thought it was rather, I thought... Like, they had cool stuff, and the first party stuff looks amazing, but it's also all looks to be like 2018 stuff, and it yeah. seemed kind of flat. Yeah. I like Microsoft to have like good ups and downs, had a bit of a flow to it. Like, it was nice having Phil just on stage all the time because, mm -hmm. you know, light goes on, it's Phil Spencer, you know Phil Spencer. Phil yep. Spencer's going to tell you that there's teraflops, and that's great. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I thought the Nintendo Direct thing was done pretty well. I hate when they do that thing where they're like, you want, you want some news? Nintendo's making a Pokemon game. Had you thought about that? Wait a minute, Nintendo's going to... Hang on. Nintendo's not making a Pokemon True game. Story. True story. And I kind of hated that, but I thought the rest of their show was pretty good. Cool. So it's it's kind of a... It feels like a very like transitional year, E3. Definitely. It's kind of like yeah. things are changing around the industry, and we just don't know where they're going at the moment. So right. it's going to be a wait and see year, I guess. Yeah. And and Brendan, you got to head out, on, out, out there and yeah. talk about bringing Battlegrounds uh, to console. Yeah, no, that was nerve-wracking. Yeah, <laughs> uh, was it a lot of rehearsals? Was it like multiple days? Four of... days. Like I've wow. been here since last Wednesday. Oh, okay. I did yeah. four days rehearsals and everything was planned to a T, but it was great. Like uh, with the other speakers backstage, kind of like cheering each other as we we're going out. And then you come back in and it's like, yeah, you did it. No mistakes. Yeah. It's like. Did the yeah. script change at all? Or is it one of the, like, are people like going like, well, actually, oh, you no. Need so to we had, I had like a, a script I was meant to read, but then like changed a lot of it. And I came in the first rehearsal and just said that. And everyone was like, that's not the script. Like, have you changed the script? Why, why are you reading that? Uh, so, yeah. And then we just hammered it down. But then on the last night, I just had a sense of relief on stage and just said it. And yeah. It worked. Awesome. Yeah. And, 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 bringing, and bringing Battlegrounds to, to Xbox One. Xbox One. Uh, and then I guess like the game had already kind of been announced. Or you, you'd said, like, hey, we're going to bring it to console. Yeah, we were working on console. Yeah. Well, not working, but looking into seeing how, how we could get it to work on console. And because we use Unreal, it's, it's quite easy to sure. port things across. So. Yeah. We have a, a Spanish team. Um, <laughs> I, I like whenever somebody in the industry says quite easy because quite you know there's just yeah. like 100 developers <laughs> and they're like smashing their yeah. face into a keyboard like, for oh a yeah, week. Oh yeah, just unreal. You just push yeah. the button Press and the button. Yeah. out here. Oh, no, my tech yeah. director yeah. loves me. He thinks I'm a great guy. Because I just go, oh, can we do this? <sighs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but hey. Awesome. But, and and uh, Dave, you're with uh, Spike Chunsoft. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we actually don't have uh, a US presence really, so right. we're not presenting at the show. Uh, we're just kind of riding on the coattails, and you know everybody who's anybody is in town right now, so it's just kind of nice to come out and you know get FaceTime with people that we never get to you know communicate with. Yeah. So is it a lot of uh, just kind of setting up a lot of meetings, just kind of like looking for new business, or is it kind of like getting out here and talking up Fire Pro Wrestling World? Or oh, uh, you said the magic word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, well. Yeah, yeah, man. That's uh, it's it's kind of cool that Fire Pro is coming back and and coming to PC, right? That's the Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's a perfect platform for it. Uh, the biggest hurdle with FirePro is that it's like the greatest wrestling simulation that nobody's heard of. 
So every time I've tried to play it, well, like I've I've yet to have my true Fire Pro moment because every time I've purchased a Fire Pro game. Turns out it, I don't understand any Japanese at all. So <laughs> trying to wrap your mind around the systems of that game and even just navigating the menus to go like, I want to make my character and do this or you know edit these moves and this sort of stuff. Uh, I'm too stupid to do that. Uh, well, so it's been exciting to you know see that this would be coming out in English again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I'll, I'll, I'm the de facto localization producer on it because we wanted to save money. <laughs> we could uh, spend it in other places. Fair enough. Yeah, so, uh, I'm our social media manager sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be, it's, you know, it's, it's beyond many hats. It's just like what needs to get done today, right? Pretty much, right. It's yeah. Indie life right yeah. there. Right. Yeah. And uh, you're off uh, updating uh, Ridiculous Fishing for 64 bit that was a fun, iPhone. That was a fun surprise. Like Apple said, hey, listen, we're going to update our OS from 32 bit to 64 bit. And it's on very September fancy. 1st, your 32 bit apps will stop working. But in the meanwhile, we'll destroy everybody's experience with your game so that they will email you continuously until you just can't see a single, single email, email anymore about 64 bit. And then three weeks ago, they just pulled it from the search. Like any 32-bit right. yeah. app is now long. And no warnings, no. So it was just like I woke up, and it's like, you can't buy your game anymore. Oh, huh. That's well, was a fun, fun way to wake up. And that's when yeah. you, as an indie, you just go like, well, I guess this is my hat today. Like, right, yeah, just updating. Let's see this. how horrible Xcode is nowadays. And then <laughs> you just kind of cry. And you just load it in and push the export 64. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. It's done. Like, we also, did an, we'd also added tilt controls to the Xbox. Two clicks, and now you can just <laughs> tilt your Xbox and ridiculous fishing. <laughs> Flawless. Beautiful. Do you have to tilt the whole Xbox? Yeah, it's the whole to, Xbox. Oh, that's, that's we were, smart. We, yeah. Originally, it was the DV, but it, nah. I, I dropped my DV. I think you know, at some point, you know, you, it's it's important uh, to think about fitness when it comes to yeah. video games. It's easy to sit ridiculous in the fitness same spot coming up. Time, so yeah, ridiculous <laughs> fitness. Uh, pick up your Xbox <laughs> edition. Throw it. Yeah. Grab the shotgun. And just <laughs> yeah, Xbox hunt. It's a whole thing. <laughs> and then you can buy an Xbox One X. Yeah. <laughs> Give four times some time. They'll make that a thing. Okay. All right. We'll see if we can set that up. Um, so, I, Alex and Dan and I, and I think most of us have really come under the spell of Battlegrounds. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry. It it's, haunts me. It's, it's, <laughs> it's great. It's not the sort of game I normally think of myself getting into either. It was, it was something that you know, like we'd seen some of the you know the, the Arma stuff and, mm -hmm. and and you know King of the Kill and and then you know there are other games out there in in the field. It just, none of them ever really clicked, and th this one did in a way that, it got its hooks in deep. Yeah, no, it's, it's I'm just happy it, it's stable, one. But, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I mean, for, for me, it's always been just give the player choice. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That it's like, let just give them a playground with lots of weapons, like games like Just Cause 3, or Just Cause 2 multiplayer, right. stuff like that, where it's just chaos, right. you know? And yeah. it, but it's fun. And it's the same with Battlegrounds. It's like, it's not as... Like fast paced as say uh, King of the Kill, mm -hmm. whereas you have time to do some fun stuff. You know, you have time to do a backflip if you want to. You know, and right. and this kind of stuff. And that's what you know the design was. It was to like, yeah, it's still a battle royale, but there's still time to have fun. Right. Yeah. Or time to just kind of hide on the second story of a building. Yeah. And hey, let people walk up there yeah. and just. Yeah, the people you're the people. Wow. The people hate you. Uh, <laughs> I won. Whatever. That's I don't care. I don't care. This, this is Let like, them hate me. Yeah, yeah. That's There's, right. There is no right way to play the game. I get people. Oh no, they're not playing it the right way. And it's like, if you win, that's the right way to play. You oh, you've been reading yeah. our comments. <laughs> 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 they say a lot about the right way to play. Yeah, in the comments yeah, yeah. On yeah, yeah sure. Sure. No, there's yeah. no right way to play, but that was the wrong way to play. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't actually. Win. I'll vouch for that. We were definitely <laughs> playing the wrong way. There was one where I had my gun trained on a person, and then for whatever reason, just didn't shoot. I don't really no. know why. It's just like, hey, are we gonna engage these guys? Are we gonna shoot these guys? No, are they shooting us? Am I dead now? Okay, all right, well, that's a good time. I saw this amazing video of some guy who was trying to shoot through a window. With I think a shotgun, mm. he tried to shoot and the, he thought the bullet didn't go through, so he was just like cursing at the game, like this, this is broken, this, is... and then at, as he was doing that, obviously he got sniped from outside through the window, <laughs> yeah. and it's just the meltdown of that was the funniest <laughs> thing I've seen in, in so. Well, I got a nice picture of a guy who sent me a picture of the corner of his screen, which was broken <laughs> ah. because he threw something at it after like dying <laughs> silly, like. Uh, it's... That's, yeah, I know. How does it it's, feel to be responsible for breaking people's psyches? <laughs> be pretty great. Uh, no, no. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know what we've done, but we've done something right. And yeah, it's been tremendous to see it really just 
taking off like this. Uh, and circle. Yeah. It's a circle. It's a circle. Oh yeah. No. No. It's really yeah. Good. Just forces action. Yeah. It's so good. It's just taking all the stuff of, of games that I've liked over the last like four or five years mm-hmm. and kind of just put them into a, my game. I mean, oh, I've yeah. never I've never put just cause together with. Player unknown, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's like just cost with a circle that gets smaller. Yeah, right. That's yeah. Holy well, crap. When, when you say like the four or five games that inspired you, like what would those be? Oh, like Delta Force, Black Hawk Down, mm-hmm. um, America's Army, two and three. Um, Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I played the oh, shit out of that game. Holy <laughs> fuck! Like, uh, but um, and yeah, Daisy, just the Daisy mod and the whole modding scene. Right. That was kind of it. Like they they were kind of what really made me. Want to make a game like this, mm-hmm. uh, just from like permadeath, that's this kind of stuff, that uh, and modding, a yeah, modding. Yeah. Uh, so, Fire Pro Wrestling World. Uh, what's the? Is is it really just kind of going back to the the roots of Fire Pro and kind of just is is the thing here? Hey, we're putting it on the PC. Is there a lot more to it? Cause I, I it sounded like that there would be maybe some kind of deeper mod support there. Right. Well, it, it's. It's kind of tenacious to call it an, an early access game because even though we're lo- launching an early access, it'll you know burst into the world essentially fully formed okay. because the the base system is going to be uh, the the previous iteration for the PS2 Fire Pro Wrestling Returns. Okay. We're basically yeah. taking the same system and uh, the whole code has been rewritten from scratch and we're moving it over onto PCs. And the question then is like, where do we go from there? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what we want to do in early access is get a lot of fan feedback because I know people have been brewing crazy ideas over the last 10 years since the previous installment. Like, we want this, that, and the other thing. Like, we want these kinds of moves. We want these kinds of modes. And the director himself is a huge fan of the game. So I've Great. been picking up all this info from, like, the forums and, you know, uh, over on the Steam pages. And I give him the director, and he's like, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. I want all these things, too. But it all comes down to... Where do we want to put our development dollars to get the biggest bang? Right. So. Yeah. And and so I it, I guess it, it it sounds like that 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 kind of PS2 stuff as it, as it moves over like it is in a state where it would be reasonable to iterate on it in meaningful ways. Then. Oh yeah, definitely. We have we have a very strong base to build on, and I mean I think just it being online. Yeah. Uh, not technically for the first time because the Dreamcast version also had like right. you could download and upload. Uh, custom wrestlers and things like that, and moves. But you know, now having like the Steam Workshop, it's just going to be uh, totally bonkers once the uh, yeah. community gets their hands on it. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, that's that's been maybe the only bright spot about some of the WWE wrestling games over the years has been just the created content and the user created stuff, and seeing like not only people creating wrestlers that aren't in the game, but you know, their own creations and just like the. Well, my personal favorite was always the story creator that they did for those games. That was just like this ridiculous mess of nonsense. Just yeah. terrible scripting. Oh yeah, I mean, but, you could, you, but you could type in your own text, so you could tell whatever. <laughs> I, so I was just writing stories that had no wrestling in them, and it was just everyone hanging out backstage at a sports arena, just talking. Like referees having coffee together. Right. Did you yeah. ever have to fight, actually, or was it just conversations? No, just conversations, and then okay. someone gets hit by a limo. My dinner with Andre the Giant. Yeah, basically. Right. Yeah. That's how it goes. It's, yeah. It's really funny because as Flambeer ourselves, we have never made a game with mod support because our games are like very small and tight. Mm-hmm. But with Nuclear Throne, something strange happened in that a fan took the game, basically like reverse engineered the code. Yeah. And then rewrote the game with mod support and then emailed us and said, Hey, is it okay if I <laughs> release this as a batcher for the original game? That's so awesome. suddenly we had mod support. Yeah, and now people are making incredible stuff like new characters, like that's great, new weapons, new new levels, new worlds. We're just like, I don't think we deserve this. But I'm very happy it exists. <laughs> so, so, did you pull any of that kind of just support structure into like the main branch we're, of the game? We're working or, with him yeah. now. Like, it, yeah. it, it, he he kind of joined the community back when the game was in early access, and he's mm-hmm. always kind of been around. But yeah, no, there there's something like as a game developer, knowing how our code looks. You kind of go like, oh god. <laughs> but then knowing what code looks like after it's been compiled and then reverse engineered, you go double oh god. And then knowing that somebody made sense out of that and then added functionality to the game, including online multiplayer, which we don't support like ourselves. <laughs> yeah, no. And like mod support, we were just like, what is this person? Like, how? Yeah. So we emailed, we emailed him and kind of like 
hire them to work on. Yeah, it's like, hey, how about we just send you the source code and see yeah, what you like, can really yeah, do? We, we <laughs> like, can do this yeah. easier. We can skip yeah. the first six months of this process. Wow. But, yeah. Yeah, mod support is like, it's a really fun thing to just watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, for lift browsers, it's kind of like, what are you, what, what do you want to like change the colors or something? But I modified Luft browsers to make it easier uh, because you could change a lot of the damage values and stuff like that pretty easily in uh, in there. So that's I, true. It's just like you know, I, I just want to see. I want to unlock all this stuff. I so. genuinely believe Luft browsers might not actually be like a video game. Video game. It's like a feeling game. Like you play it and then you're like, <laughs> okay, I feel better about myself. And then you just kind of <laughs> does die. that make it an emotional game? Yeah, it's like basically Gone Home, but with airplanes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's, that's, exactly, that's how I describe exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. I, I would think of it as Gone Home is more of like a Luft Rouser's clone. Yeah, in a yeah, sense. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I guess you could, you could approach it. Yeah, Steve Gainer went home, so it's safe to say that. Exactly. He left town, so <laughs> Good. whatever, man. That dude. Whew. Yeah. God. Um, so I mean. How different, I mean, I imagine it's been dramatically different coming at Battlegrounds as opposed to modding an existing game. Does it feel very, like, extremely liberating to just go like, okay, whatever no, we can come tough. up with that we can afford, or is it more no, like... No, it was really tough the first, like, few months because when I was making mods, for the first part, I pretty much did everything myself, from, like, the artwork to, right. to writing code, very, very, very bad code. You think your code's bad? Fuck. Oh, no, we, we <laughs> no, beat no. you. Don't like, you worry. No, no, there's, there's lines in, like, our GitHub where there's, like, we have a new coder looking after the Armour 3 mod, and it's like, you know, feel free to rewrite. This is old, ba original Battlegrounds code. Very messy. Um, <laughs> and just, yeah, my, my code was bad, but coming from that and then going into a position of, like, creative director, really, Okay. We, I, have code challenge. I, literally have, okay. I literally have messages, comments in our code that is like, don't forget to take out the trash. Oh, that we just never <laughs> removed because it was there. That's just cute. <laughs> I just, I, yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, so, um, what was I talking about? The uh, code. It's, oh. Coding and, and kind of, you know, yeah, no, being so, a creative director. Yeah, so, like, coming as a creative director, then being, like, the visionary in the company, like, and not having to implement stuff, and the micromanaging team. In teams mm. internally trying to go, well, I should do this and I should do that. And that was tough to kind of stand back and go, and now I trust them. And now right. it's yeah. just let them do their things and they're great. I mean, and you've got like a pretty decent cadence uh, for updates uh, it's going our, through early access. It's like our boss's agile system. So he adapted agile to his own making. Ah. And it's really good, like weekly and monthly updates. And it, it works well. Yeah. Uh, and with the popularity of the game, I imagine each one of those updates. Does it kind of become a nail biter? Where on one hand you're like, oh, we're fixing this thing we know we need to fix, but also we're introducing this thing, and now the car's kind of in motion, and you're starting to change things. Oh yeah, no, and no, we like we we had that with when we did a uh, looting update, and when you looted from the inventory, you wouldn't play an animation, and we put it in, and there was a bug in it that would play the full animation every time you, car uh, and people hated that, and we got <laughs> uproar, and we had to change back. Uh, but now we're being very careful about what we change because the core game kind of works, you know. We just right. want to polish it off a little bit. But yeah. yeah, but we have the test server that we roll out stuff to and, and hope nothing breaks um, in 24 hours. But you know, we, we have a great QA team. Like we have six people on our QA team that do nothing but like play the game constantly and just look for things. So mm -hmm. you know, by the time we release it to the public, then it's it's relatively stable. Do you have like a, a, a batch of things that you look at and think, oh, we should definitely fix this, but actually? The game is better because it's kind of like I ran myself over with my own car. That seems like something that would be very hard to do, but I managed a way to do it. Uh, and it was like, okay, well, I, I got out of the car and kind of skipped the animate, like something, the models moved in a certain way, and then I ran myself down. And I was like, that's the best, that's one of the best things that's happened to me in oh, my yeah, entire time with the game. There's lots of stuff we don't want to like, the, you know, the ragdoll sometimes is a little crazy. Yeah. But I like that, you know, but, you know, it's, it's mainly. Like our focus is optimizing performance and, and getting the servers up to spec. You know, at the moment, right. yeah, we'll add new stuff. That's that's, but you know, sure, that's what sure. the focus is really. You know, the f it's kind of feature complete, and now it's just polishing off stuff. Cool. And physics. Oh my God, physics. Um, <laughs> just yeah. We're gonna see tress effects for hair. You know, we're gonna go. And it's, no. Let's just keep implementing <laughs> all this stuff. So when you clear with weekly updates, do you also have that thing where you look at features that are gonna take more than two or three update cycles, and you're just like, how are we gonna? Oh yeah, we have that with vaulting. So, like our vaulting system, it's prototyped and it works mm -hmm. and it, it's dynamic. But you know, it was written in maybe a week and it's still being worked on. You <laughs> know, and it's like, I, and we're like, it's not coming out in the June update. Maybe July. Um, it just, when, yeah. When you announce the vaulting thing, I think you said something like, if you stand in front of in front of something, you will vault over it. Mm -hmm. And I heard you will vault over it. 
You and would? I just, yeah, I thought it was like, you have to. If you're standing <laughs> on, in front of something that you can vault over, you will automatically vault over. And I was just like, that's an amazing video game. Yeah. <laughs> I want to play. Please set that as a switch where yeah, you just. Right, yeah, if you're in front of it, it just does time, it Link would just jump if you walk to the edge of something. <laughs> it's just that, you know. It's well, worth it's well easy. For them. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Ocarina of Time of murder games. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, no. <laughs> I, am I wrong? <laughs> no, but I mean, it, why not make it easier to kill people? I mean, sure. Yeah, that's that's half the fun. <laughs> uh, early access and you know Japanese game development isn't something that often go hand in hand. When you think about it, it seems like this is maybe I, you don't really think of a lot of Japanese developers getting into programs like this. Has it been interesting and exciting to kind of like say, like, hey, we're we're gonna get out there and, and do this? Yeah. Well. <sighs> The most difficult part about uh, trying to do Fire Pro early access is explaining to the devs and to the managers like and producers what exactly early access is, how it's supposed to work, how you're supposed to you know talk to the community and get feedback. Uh, one thing I've noticed a lot about uh, in the West, especially recently, it's there's a very close distance between the development community and the actual players of the game. You know, everyone's on Twitter and you're talking back and forth. But in Japan, there's kind of like this, with, right. you know, there's there's a few creators that are really getting in there, but for the most part, there's kind of like this like professional mm -hmm. distance. So uh, the fact that you know Spike Jonesoft is willing to let me be there and you know be an inter intermediary between the devs and the community, I think is really cool. You know. Or yeah. thinking sort of way. I mean, it kind of speaks to the nature of the game too, because like you know, sort of what made it popular in the West, even when they weren't releasing here, was kind of like the hardcore community of people that wanted to trade, you know, their badly copyright violating wrestlers and, <laughs> and what have you. Uh, so it, it feels like the I'm, to me at least, it feels like kind of like the right format for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It, I mean. It does, but then again, corporations don't always right. make those choices. So it's super cool to hear that in this case they are. That's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like uh, breaking those walls down feels like over an overdue kind of thing. And definitely, you know, I think you know over the last year or two, it's been really fascinating to see just kind of more Japanese developers approaching the PC in general. Uh, you know, and and even just Sega starting to port more of its stuff, or you know, some of these Platinum games, Vanquish finally coming over, and oh. all this stuff. Yeah, right. It's my God, I, I, that's like one fourth of the reason I have my Xbox 360 still hooked up. All right, well, one down. What's one down. What, what else needs to get ported before? Uh, split second. Because, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that, 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 that already exists second. on PC. Yeah, but I want, like a, I want an updated yeah, version. Yeah. Um, I don't have to do Alan Wake anymore. Binary Domain, which I adored. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like Alpha Protocol, even though it's kind of broken. But like, it's Matt Rory worked on Alpha Protocol. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, Matt Rory's Alpha Protocol. Your game. Made it. Yeah. Love it a lot. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, it, I have I have a fondness for games like that, where you can tell that there was a dream and a vision. Yeah, and, and it didn't quite. It never because it, that's what a dream and a vision is. It's why I love Peter Molyneux, and it's kind of why I like David Cage's work. It's like you look at the games, you're like, this was a long shot, and it was never going to happen. But my God, am I glad that there's somebody taking those shots, right? Because yeah. it pushes the industry in a certain direction, and that's that's incredible. Yeah, you, you know, I think in that game, what was it? You kind of just you spec into pistols and stealth, and you're just pretty much invincible for yeah. the entire game, right? Yeah, the number of bosses I beat just going like, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I guess that's you know part of the fun when you've got realistic weapons is that dramatic moment of. Just wiping someone out and sending them back to the lobby. Yeah, it it's looks a, way too happy saying that. I know, right? It's it, like that's honestly, <laughs> it's oh. yeah, I know. It's like it's kind of crazy. I, I keep going back to the one game I won because we've been streaming it and I've been playing like <laughs> shit every time. Um, but yeah, I I won. I got twelve kills, and I, and I've never done that well ever again. I may never do that well again. Um, but that one win has been enough to keep me going in pursuit of that type of performance again. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a certainly addictive pursuit. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a good feeling when you win. And it's been such a heavy game uh, for streaming, uh, obviously. And uh, you know, you've been doing some things here with streamers and kind of custom servers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. What's it been like, kind of supporting that community? It's been great. We have Poopy Queen, our community manager, best name on the internet. Um, <laughs> it's up there, yeah, right? Um, she like she's just been a legend with with community, and she set up the partner program, and you know it's proving really well. It's not just Twitch streamers; it's just people who love battle royale and support the, like the game basically in, right. in whatever form. Yeah, and 
and we try to give something back in the form of custom servers, which is our, our sort of start into modding. Mm -hmm. You know, they can kind of change stuff and we'll eventually add, add it that you can take out the Battle Royale game mode completely and have a custom server that you can do whatever you want on. on, on this wow, kind of, yeah. But we're getting there. And it sounds like zombies are coming to the game. This so, is something that was tested yeah, in yeah. custom so th servers, This right? was like we... We, we saw the game, like, uh, there was Korean streamers and the zombie mode of four of them with weapons and everyone else was just using Malik. Um, yeah. Just ended up being crazy fun. So when we were in the Czech Republic, our executive producer told our animator, let's get some zombie animations so we can put them in, right? And we both agreed it was like fast zombies, like World War Z, mm -hmm. 28 Days Later, that kind of, like, you see the zombies, you run the fuck away. You know, it's not right. like I can take these on. and so. The video you saw was made by myself and the lead animator in about three days. Um, <laughs> um, you know, we have no plan for it yet. We're not investing a huge amount of uh, time into it because you know we want to You've optimize got higher priority stuff. Yeah, performance, <laughs> um, servers. My God, the servers. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's it's something we want to do. We want to do you know ninety players playing as zombies versus ten players playing with weapons, and, and that's. Do you design like obviously with the with how much streaming there is? The, the, you know, normally when you make a game, you're very aware of the loop between like a player and a game. Mm -hmm. There's like input from the player and then output from the game, but you're designing like two circles, right? Because the game is also outputting to the audience. And yeah, the audience yeah. is inputting to the player. Like, is, ha have you had like a lot of strange challenges figuring out how to... Again, like we haven't really, like it, we know it's a massive spectator sport. Like we know like on Twitch, like people watch it all the time, but we don't design it for that. You know, it's like, it, for us it's, I think it, it's just the nature of the game. It's again, you say it's the circle. You know, it's yeah. it's it's the nature of a battle royale. That especially in our version, it's a bit slower. So there's time for a streamer to chat to a community. So there's that right. interaction. Yeah. But then, even though maybe eighty percent of matches are a bit boring, you know, there's those twenty percent that are just amazing. Right. Have, that's what people coming back. It's the drama, right? Yeah. yeah the drama of your streamer getting that far and like the circle getting flying. It's like a good game of soccer, basically. Yeah. You know? It's like it just yeah. that chance of something amazing to happen. And it's it's a game that lends itself. So we were talking about it with uh, some folks from Microsoft on yesterday. We were talking about the game and mm -hmm. just like how it really lends itself so well to stories from the players. Oh, like yeah. everyone wants to talk about their run. Mm -hmm. I will talk about these 12 kills I got with this shotgun for at least another two months. Okay, yeah, yeah. But the, it, it at least. It, uh, it, it, and, like, just, it seems like everyone kind of has their story of just like, oh, we were in the motorcycle, we jumped into this, and, you know, either they were capturing it or streaming it, but maybe they're just like, hey, you know, this thing I did last night was the craziest shit ever. That's why I loved because it was nonlinear, and you just, you chose what you wanted to do, and, and you created your own story, right? And mm -hmm. it's the same with Battlegrounds, is like, you decide how intense your round's going to be, where you want to drop, and you decide how you want to play it. You know, if you want to go crazy, you do go crazy. If you want to camp the whole thing, do and it gives you a different experience every time. And I think that's why it's popular at the moment. Yeah. It's, yeah. Do you have a, a recommended style that you re like for for new players or anything? Oh like yeah, that? get the fuck away from everyone else. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just like get away from everyone else. Get out of the plane and just get get far away yeah, yeah. and just creep go your way get in. Get geared. Get armor. Get weapons. Is you know, jumping immediately a good idea? Immediately. Yes. Probably. But I don't know. Like, just choose somewhere that you can maybe see a car or... Okay. Get, like, just spot it from the air and get away. Because I, I'll tell you, like, as we've streamed this game a handful of times, we get a lot of tips. Like, people are like, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> they're spending too long getting gear. They're wasting the time getting gear. They're not, they're, this is a bad time. They're, no, no, no. They're doing it all wrong. There's no right way to play. Yeah. But if you win, <laughs> are you good? No. <laughs> That's, people always yeah. ask developers for tips, and I always have to go right. like, listen, I'm horrible at my game. No, like, I have, I, but I, I at least Maric assume that you've watched a lot of people play and maybe oh, gleaned some stuff every from Every day, like, uh, I basically have Twitch running constantly. Yeah. They're, they're better than me. So I just, yes, like, they are. Yes, what I should do is dodge these 4.6 million bullets, and no then problem. roll to this weapon, and then insta-kill everything on the screen. Yeah. That's a great tip, but I can't do it. It doesn't, it doesn't help me. Yeah. yeah. And then do a thousand suplexes <laughs> different styles. <laughs> well, there actually are over a thousand different moves, but there's maybe only so many suplexes. Okay, well, you need fair to add more there. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's I mean, yeah, it's like let us know where you want us to put our money in. <laughs> <laughs> is this is it like the Chris Jericho kind of thousand and one man of a thousand holds, thousand and one holds? <laughs> thousand no, it was a thousand three holds. There's a lot of arm bars. There's a thousand four because Malenko was a thousand. That's right. Yeah. So it was arm bar. Yeah, a lot of arm bars. A lot of arm bars. Yeah. As it turns out. So maybe maybe put in some more arm bars. No, I mean it, it almost feels like you have a thousand and four moves at your disposal because I don't know if you've ever gone down the edit wrestler rabbit hole but I've, I've started to and, yeah. and it's it's a lot man it's a lot 
uh, somewhere between the move list and like the AI programming. <laughs> right, it's the, it was the always the AI programming that I got to, and I was like, oh man, this is it's amazing that this is here, and I don't know that I can fully devote myself to this. Uh, <laughs> Work your game. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just it, it always went so deep, and it was fascinating to see like you know here's this like 2D wrestling game in the era of like you know as as games are becoming more and more polygonal and, and going further and further, uh, even back when when I first discovered the series, and anyone who knew anything about anything was always like, yeah, you know it's great that the graphics are better, and yeah, I know this one has Scott <laughs> Steiner in it or whatever, but hey, you need to be playing this because this is this is the real wrestling game here. Uh, it, it must be, uh, I, I imagine that, that kind of just either gives you a leg up or is terrifying to be able to say like, hey, this has this like established fan base that is like extremely hungry for this thing to come back. It's been a while. Oh yeah, well I mean, the fact that the community was there waiting for it was definitely a huge push in able to getting this game approved. Uh, the director is a guy named Matsumoto, he's been trying to get a new Fire Pro made for like the past 10 years. Right. And every time he brings it to the board, they're like, no, uh-uh, maybe next time. But because of now, of like we had, or we've been uh, publishing on uh, PC with Steam recently, and right. we've had a great success there. So they figured they'd give them a chance. Cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's been really interesting seeing people's reactions to the games because, like, the old school fans are like, "Oh yes, like Fire Pro is back, awesome." But then people are seeing the, the series for the first time. It's like, what is this? You know, like this. This looks like you're playing with like action figures or something. Yeah. So. Uh, I imagine, like, yeah, educating new fans as to, like, where this thing comes from and, and why it's important and all this sort of stuff. I guess that'll, that'll be part of the, the challenge of getting it out. Yeah. There. I ripped off page one z one That's what I did. <laughs> I, I'm just out. trying to imagine how exciting it must be for... for what was his name? Uh, Matsumoto? Yeah, how exciting it must be for after 10 years to finally get that green light. Yeah. That must feel so good. Oh, man, he's, he's all smiles all day. Oh, that's super good <laughs> to hear. He's not even feeling yeah. the crunch. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So, when are we going to hear more about Vlam? I mean, the, the book came out. Yeah. Uh, all this other stuff. I know, uh, you know, side projects are happening. And yeah. Other stuff. So, Flamber is a bit in maintenance mode. We've been focusing on getting our old 64 stuff. 64-bit stuff. Has yeah. To, yeah. It's basically <laughs> that. It, you know, Flamber was a roller coaster for me and JW, and and in many ways we were just never quite ready for how big it got. So, mm -hmm. we've been sort of. We never grew. We never like. We were just the two guys who started the thing. So. We've been looking at the stuff we've made and just kind of fixing some stuff, and mm. that's mostly my job. Like JW is sort of the, the creative part of the company. Uh -huh. I just kind of do the implementation and everything around it. Um, so we basically said, like, you know what? We're gonna split off for a little while. JW, you go make a side project. I'll go fix our stuff, and then eventually, you know, when we're ready, we'll get back together and we'll start on a new project. And we've been talking about new stuff, so there's definitely new games coming. Cool. Uh, I just have no idea what. They are uh, like there's just prototypes. You know, you, you play something, you go like, "How about like a ballet game with mm, guns on your like whatever?" Sure, like, why not? Yeah. Because like we add guns to anything, whether it's a fishing yeah. game or not. So. Do you do you feel that like there's going to be a, a shift uh, in in Vlambeer's output? Because I think about Vlambeer, you think about yeah. screen shake, you think about this sort of stuff. Is the screen shake era over? Or are we entering the double screen shake era? Well, we've we've oh, since since nuclear thrown, we implement a slider where you can set the screen shake to yeah. zero or two hundred percent. We don't. We want people to have like the choice in the realest screen shake, just to talk in Microsoft terms. It's like the truest <laughs> screen shake. You um, witnessed the most powerful screen the shake. Most, this we want nuclear thrown in three twenty by two forty on your screen on a four K screen, and if the screen shakes, it just shakes all over the four K screen. HD like, screen shake. Four K yeah. screen shake. We, yeah. we, but no, so JW on the side has been working on a game called Minute, which mm -hmm. is with Devolver Digital, and it just looks adorable. It, it's with his, uh, with his partner and two others. Uh, and it's just, it's incredible to see, you know, him working on that side thing while I'm Fixing dealing stuff. with Apple. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, we'll have new stuff coming up, and it's, I'm actually like, quite excited to get back to it. And I think for our new games, they're going to be a bit smaller. Nuclear Throne was like three and a half years. I don't know how long you work on a project, but three and a half years for me is, is too much. It's a lot, I, it's a lot I need something to yeah. like. I need something to be like very excited about. So mm -hmm. our next game is going to be very exciting for me. All right. Uh, I hope. Great. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just cry. Yeah. Uh, what was the? the I guess like at some point the player unknown name you're, you're, you know got out there in a way that like now you're 
Yeah. Like Sid Meier or American <laughs> McGee. No, no, or I'm not. No, no, no. No, no you no. are now. There's no getting right around there. it. There's, yeah, no, no. There, there's no turning back from this. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was like, you know, putting my name on the game, like it was either going to be great or it was going to be shit. Um, <laughs> it turned out to be great. So, yeah. Yay. Um, uh, yeah. And, and so, uh, obviously, you know, servers and, uh, you know, that type of, of maintenance is kind of mm-hmm. in, in the near term. Yeah. Uh, and then... Stuff like it. 3D replays we've got coming, which like you'll be able to play cool. the, the the match back in the engine and use cinematic cameras and depth of field and all kinds of Is stuff. Is that something where it's like it'll be a match that you were in, or are oh, you yeah. thinking like, oh, we're gonna we build like the matches. Dota replay it'll type be, thing yeah, of like go watch any game that's ever happened? And we can, we were gonna be storing the data for all the games, so why not? Yeah, you know that you can just go back and watch anyone's game. You know? Right. So yeah. yeah, no, I'm excited about that. It's because it gives content creators really interesting ways to do stuff, especially if you have slow motion and stuff like that. And right, yeah. yeah. If you've got all that data, i got to know, mm-hmm. what weapon has killed the most? We're still crunching that. Okay. Actually, I asked our data science guys for this, but there's so much da- data. They were oh, like, I yeah, I can't answer you this week. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe next week. It's like, yeah. we're going to let this query run for the next couple of weeks and yeah. see how it goes. And yeah. But yeah, it's, it's insane, insane amounts of data. Do you yeah. know how many hours have been played? Many. That's uh, a good number. Yeah, yeah, no, many, many. An unknown number. Many. Yeah, but a player oh, unknown okay. number. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so what's the plan for console? Is it kind of get out of early access on PC this year and then implement on Xbox? Or? Well, no, we, we hope to come out on Xbox later part of this year as well. Okay. I mean, where we want to try to, you know, launch early access and or get out early access and come out on console around about the same time. Okay. You know, that's, that's the plan internally. And it's good because, like, our console team is a team called Intikto from... Um, Spain. They mm-hmm. did Mutable, which is like the character customization system. They, okay. It was yeah. in APB Reloaded, I think, as well. Right, and a right. A few others. But uh, they're doing the console version. So, like, our main team that's working on the PC version don't have to, you know, change. Yeah, because, okay. like, yeah. I get lots of lovely feedback via the internet. Um, <laughs> they're, they're wonderful people. Thank you. Um, but no, they're terrible. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I was just about to say, I don't know how you managed to say that yeah. without like yeah. breaking so much. Oh, no. I mean, I enjoy my trolls with coffee in the morning. You know, it's just. Still have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, w- uh, with that in mind, I guess, like, I, so early access, you know, and then do you foresee the game being done? Or what oh, changes? Yeah. When the game well, comes no, out of early access, what actually changes? Because I so assume... So stable platform. Okay. Stable with modeling support will come after. We'll have two new okay. maps. We're hoping maybe when we come out of early access, the new maps will be ready. But new maps take a lot of time. Especially they're like, big maps. And yeah, they're both, they're the, new, the new ones are both 8x8 as well. So like they're going to take time. Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, that's uh, we have planned going forward for like we want this to run for five years. You know that it's not right. just a a, a a year or two years. Yeah. We, we intend on building a really good platform here, and that's going to take some time. But. And then uh, Fireport Wrestling World is not yet launched on early access, right? Correct. And is is it is there a, a launch date for it yet? Or is it still kind of coming together? I wish I could tell you guys, okay. but the uh, the PR team back home would. Crucify me, so. But you, but that, I mean that tells me uh, you do have a date in mind, <laughs> yes. right? Okay. Okay. So. But we, we actually we're having uh, another uh, fan event uh, next Wednesday in Japan, where we'll be releasing or gi- giving uh, announcing the release date. Fantastic. So probably you know U.S. time sometime on. Uh, It'd be Tuesday then? All right. Yeah, because we're in the future. Yeah. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, yeah, I have so I know yeah. as well. Like, yeah. we, we have right. the future time. Yeah, it's great. It's always fun to fly back here from there because you get to eat breakfast it's twice. so <laughs> great. Yeah. I, I had that once where I, the first time I had to fly that, I had a meeting at, like, the 11th at, like, 8 a.m., and I flew out at 11th on at 11 a.m., and I was like, I have no idea how this works, but yeah. I'm very excited that I can make this meeting. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. You gain a day on the way here, right. and then on the way back you just lose a day. Yeah, yep. like leave on Monday, arrive on Wednesday. I lose days all the time. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming through. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you about this stuff. This, uh, it's all really exciting. I get Fire Pro, and of course Battlegrounds, and and I just more Flambeer. Next Flambeer game. Flambeer I mean, next. I will make sure that whatever it is, you will be able to get twelve kills in it. Great, just okay. Me. Just yeah. once, though. Yeah, just once. And then I can talk about it for yep. months to come. Just ban him for the game deletes the, itself from your hard drive. The one moment <laughs> of glory I had. You can never take that away from me. All right, thanks. We'll be back. we got one more segment to go, so hang in there. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>